Hey, welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make something like this. Actually, I'm just kidding. I'm not. It. <laughs> this is just a 3D model that I made a while ago. It's a car that I was making for a game I was trying to make. But, this shows you kind of what kind of stuff I can do. This is something I made a long time ago. I'm a lot better than I used to be. But anyway, I'm going to teach you about the 3D printing aspect, this tab here. Kind of what this does. Anyway, stay tuned. This is Kevin with Inventomark, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the 3D print options in Blender. Uh, first off, I'm going to turn on the screen capture keys. This is something that used to be included with Blender, but you have to install it manually. It just shows this little thing over here and you can watch and see what keys I push as I go along. And so first thing you need to do, I don't have it installed right now so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. You go to user preferences under the file. Go to just the add-ons tab up here and just search 3D and it will have a whole bunch of different things here but the one you want is the one on the bottom. It's the Mesh 3D Print Toolbox. And just click on that and then Save User Settings. And it will show up down here in the little corner. And what it does, I'll show you something that what it kind of does and how it works here. First off, I'm just going to create a cylinder. And zoom in on that. And then I'm going to deform it somewhat. And I'll show you a little cool feature that Blender has that I haven't shown you yet. It's the uh, this, I don't even know what it's called. It's the proportional editing mode. That's what it's called. And when you move one object, it moves all the ones nearby up to a certain amount. You can scroll the with the mouse. You can just move it in a little bit. Just move the one by itself if you make the ring small enough. But you zoom out and it kind of moves everything along with it. it up to the whole object even. It's actually really cool. I use that quite a, quite frequently. But I'm going to use that to show you how the uh, 3D tool works. If you just drag up, say you want something like that just on the z-axis and see the cylinder it looks kind of kind of goofy now because if you look right here you got this line and that's actually not part of the model at all. It's just that how Blender shows it. And you got this one here. It's all weird and goofy looking. So if you click on the 3D printing tab, the one that I use the most is the uh, distorted. I usually basically just use all three of these. These, I think, just kind of tell you what's going on or what, like the, like the generation, distorted, thickness, and all that. It just kind of shows you down here what it is but if you click on the distorted button you'll see that it'll create a whole bunch of different lines on here and it basically makes it so the models uniform in a way that is actually what it's supposed to be like meant to be as far as the shape goes so now it's all normalized and it looks normal and compared to before it doesn't have all those weird shapes and things like that and this is really, really good thing to use, like, different things. Let me try to show you another thing here. Like, if you want to make something like this and rotate it on one axis and everything and... Oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> press the wrong button. Accidentally extracted instead of grabbed it. So if you grab it on the Y Oh, somehow that got turned off. So grab it on the Y. and you move that over it makes it all really weird looking and if you hit the distorted 
it tries to fix it as much as possible, but it not always does it work. Let's try doing that again. I'll try just a little bit. So it's got kind of an indent there. And it's overlapped and nope, still did the same thing. So So if we try to move it like that way, this will probably there we go. This will probably work. Yeah, see it there it did it, but then you got these kind of ridges here. So it works for certain types of things, but it doesn't work for everything. It does work though, and I've used that quite a bit. It makes it so that the slicer program you use makes it so that it does it faster and doesn't have to sit there and make way more calculations than it really needs to. And I use that quite frequently. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the uh, other thing I, I don't think I've actually talked about is the basic terminology for most things like that right there those four vertices vertices that I've selected that's actually called a face and there's different selection tools you can use in blender and they're down here you have the vertex select the edge select has a little vertex edge and face select if you click face select you can select the individual faces and say you wanna make something that's just got all those different faces you can go around and select just uh, every other one and you wanna just get those just extract with E and pull it up and it makes kind of a cool little thing there but that can be used for all kinds of different things you can even use it for like gears and things like that and but actually blender actually has a gear option in there and that's we can go into the file user settings your preferences again and type in gear oh. no I was in 3d model still Think. Let me try to find it. <laughs> or models. Nope, I forgot where it was. I need to add that anyway. 3D view. Mesh. Yeah, there we go. Mesh. Nope, that's not it either. Add mesh. Oh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Bolt Factory is a cool one where you can make your own bolts and extra objects. Add those and save settings. So when you press uh, Shift A, you now have a whole bunch of different options down here. You have the bolt, you can make different types of bolts and nuts. And Actually, with this new version of Blender, there's uh, more things as round cube. I, don't, I haven't seen that one yet. But here's the gears option. You can make gears. And just like most things with Blender, anytime you open something up, you have a little option down here. I don't know if you can drag that out, but... No. It'd be, be kind of nice if you could make that its own window. I know like other 3D modeling programs it has a window that pops up and stuff like that but anyway you can make number, however many teeth you want like make 40 teeth and you gotta remember that you can't move the object while you're editing out over here otherwise it this goes, totally goes away but you can make it however big you can change the view however you want by scrolling in and out and zoom but don't move the object itself you can make it however wide you want make the inside make the outer edges of the gear it's called the addendum you can change the angle of the outside of the gear skewness you can actually make twisted gears only problem with that is you get the little loop on there but I've actually made gear sets like that that do work it's just not aesthetically pleasing as most normal gears they get like they're manufacturing and there's the conical angle you can actually make 
Make it zoom in and out like that. Let's make this all kind of normal. And what this does is the crown, it makes these kind of gears. I've, these are for like, uh, I don't know if you've ever had Legos with the side gear that you move and it kind of turns at a 90 degree angle. That's I, I think that's what that's for, but I'll show do another set of uh, another video showing on how to make gears and how to get the right teeth angle and everything like that because I've actually figured out how to do that and actually have a the extruder that I use for my printer I have uh, I made a new set of gears for it because the motor that I had for the extruder was really weak it was a it was a NEMA 14 I think but the extruder that I printed out would work really well except for it just didn't have enough power because I, I use a Bowden extruder on my printer and it used to, it would just not push it hard enough so I had to get a new motor but to fix that temporarily I made some new gears that are even better than the ones that come with the actual model and I actually put that on Thingiverse and you can download those and print them out and look at them and I'll put a link to that down in the comments area but yeah gears are something cool and there's different objects you can make that are pretty cool like it's got pipe joints that you can make and shift A and you go to t torus objects you can well, you have the normal torus but you can make really weird like twisted things like that there's all sorts of different things you could do with that make it big and if you did something like that and you use the 3D printing it would take the distortion out and make it actually worse than it was but it still make it kinda cool and so now I'm going to explain what the uh, non-manifold means it's really simple actually if you have a cube or something like that and you have something that's uh, oh. undo that but if, like, it's like the edge tool just extract that out and extract that out extract that out I should go back to vertices and select all of these together creates a face on it that's not really working but when it's non-manifold it basically means that it's like a cube that's not fully formed so let me show you from scratch like just do a plane and I'll extract all of these and I'll actually change it to here make a face and I'll extract just one vertex up here and instead of using the oh, oops. the other one is a vertex but what happens when a object is non-manifold oh, I have that selected still sometimes that'll throw you off you gotta make remember if that's on or off but sometimes an object will look solid it'll look just fine but then it won't be completely full like this here, this object let me just go in orthographic view but it can be like that and it'll look completely normal everything on it looks just fine but when you go to try to print it it'll say it's non-manifold because what happens, and I don't know I've never actually made any 
objects in Blender that have been on a manifold. I don't know if that comes from other 3D printing software or anything else or where actually how it happens you can make stuff in blender that'll do that but even like this it's what happens is there's a gap somewhere there's the object like if you wanted to fill this object full of water it would leak out of here that's what it means by non-manifold you also can think of it like a car manifold if it's leaking it's not going to work like it's supposed to but like that it there that's just a leak and sometimes it'll be it'll have like a little thing that goes through on that and on like really detailed objects you'll have little things like that all over the place that I've actually gone in and fixed objects that are like that and been able to make a manifold at the end but it's <laughs> but quite tedious to do so you want to try to make sure you don't do anything like that when you get overlaps of little tiny ridges or anything like that but that's what the non-manifold does so if you click on non-manifold if I click on that now it's gonna fix that and what it did is it actually made a face in there for it, it the non-manifold actually fixed the problem by adding this extra face there if you click on distorted it's not going to do anything now because nothing's really distorted on it. You can change the angle on it on how much of a distortion how much you want it to fix. And these just shows down here below it if you click on it it shows what's wrong with the model and overhanging face that's the bottom of it. Of course it's going to be overhanging but it just kind of explains what's wrong with the object to you and that's basically just a quick overview of what the 3d model printing things do but anyway that's all i really have for now and keep looking for new videos and let me know what you'd like to learn about thanks for watching have a good day